Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Brian with Duran's Designs. In this video, I'm going to continue my series on a beginner's guide to the Vectric tool menu. In part two, we're going to continue on with the Vectric drawing tools. So I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please like and subscribe and comment down below and let me know what you thought. So let's do it now. So we're going to pick right up where we left off with the draw polygon tool as the next option. So you see you got your different options there. You got a number of sides you can choose. And if you just choose the first option, which is five, and you can click anywhere on the document and you will get whatever size option you pick there, the radius. And we can undo that. Go back in and we can choose our center point. So if you choose your Y and X coordinates, you can choose where you want the center of your shape to be. So if we choose five and five in your X and Y coordinates, now you can also pick the radius of the shape that you want to make. Uh, but in this case, we're going to do the side length, which would be five inches. And we'll hit create and each side of the polygon is five inches in length. Okay, so we'll just close that out and we'll start a new one there. You can see you can change the number of sides and that'll just give you a square. If you go four, if you go three, you will get a triangle. And obviously you can pick your center point and your radius or your side length for each of those shapes. Then you can go up to almost as many sides as you want. So if you keep going up in the number of sides, you get a different shape each time. And obviously you can pick the center point where you want it to start and you can pick all the other side length or the radius as well. That gives you an interesting almost circle. So we'll go back down to six sides there. And we can uh, adjust the center point just to show how that works. So if you were to put it at zero, zero, then it's going to start at the bottom left of the left corner of the document. And if you start a new one, you could uh, put it right in the center of the document by choosing five and five as your start point. And there you got right in the middle of the document. You can also adjust this with your node editing function just hitting N on your keyboard and you can make those shapes pretty much any configuration that you want with that. Move them around. You can use your keyboard once it's highlighted in red and your arrow keys or you could just use your mouse pointer as well. I like to use the arrow keys whenever I'm adjusting nodes. It gives you a lot more control over the positioning. You can also add points or delete points by hitting I, hovering over the line and hitting I, or right clicking on the point and deleting it. Okay, so now we'll delete that and we'll move on to the next tool, which is our create star. Now you can have a number of points your standard is a five point star. If you pick roughly five, five of the document, you're gonna go right in the middle. And again, you can go into node editing and you can adjust your points, your nodes, and you can make it 
whatever size you want. And the possibilities are almost endless on what you can do with node editing. Okay, so we'll get rid of that and we will go back in and see how we can adjust it in the menu. So you got your different options here of adjustment. You have the inner radius percentage. So that's how much the inner parts of the points of the star, like in the center, how thick that's going to be or, or what the radius will be. So you adjust that amount and that changes the shape of the star. So you can just click on the on the document and that'll create smaller stars or you can drag it out and make it as big as you want. All right, so we'll delete that and we'll move on to the next menu. And it's probably one of the most important ones in the Create Vector tool menu, and that's the Draw Line Polyline tool. So we click on that, and we'll just go to the document, and you click your left mouse button, and that gives you a starting point. And then every time you click it again, that gives you another node where you can edit and follow a pattern, follow a shape. And if you click on the original node, that closes out the vector. All right, so another way you can do this is you can click the line, click the create line tool again, click your first point, and then at your second point, you click and you hold down your mouse button and you pull, and you can create a curved vector. And you can change the shape of that curve by pulling on the handlebars in different directions. Up and down makes it higher or lower. Back and forth changes the angle. You do it again. You keep pulling it and you can make some interesting curved shapes. You click on the original node and you've got a finished shape. All right, so we'll delete that. And we'll see some other ways we can use the create line tool. Okay, so the, the way I use it the most is I would open up a bitmap file so say we have an image of a car and we can trace it if we want to create vectors for that image. So you would first go down to object properties and just lower the bitmap. You can fade it out. I usually go around 15%. Just make sure the image is uh, selected when you're doing this or you won't have that option. All right, so now you can see what you're doing. So you go to your create line. Okay, so you can go and you can just start creating some lines. You want to just go around. You can zoom in using your scroll wheel on your mouse. And every time you click, the mouse button, you're going to get a new node, and you can edit that node afterwards with the node editing function. Now you, if you want to move your document, you hold down your scroll wheel, And you can keep going around the whole thing. You don't have to get too fancy because you're going to go in afterwards and adjust your nodes with the node editing function. You're just going to get it as close as you can. Just make sure you zoom out every once in a while. Make sure you're following where you want to go. Made that mistake before, but it's easy to fix. by fading the 
image first, you can see where you want to go a lot better. You keep going around the image, zooming in and out, using the scroll wheel. Like I said, you don't have to worry about getting too fancy. And if you make a mistake, like I just held the mouse button down too long there and it gave me a curve, I didn't really want that. That's not a big deal. You can just click the line after you've gotten out of the tool creation. And you can just hit N on your keyboard and you can just adjust that or delete the point. And you can also just drag it where you want it. Uh, I'm gonna delete that point and I will add a point. Actually, you can see that this line is curved because I dragged it. So you, you can see it has the handlebars. So if you wanna change that line from a curved line to a regular line, you right click and you would go to line. So now it's not a curved line anymore. You can add a point by hitting I on your keyboard. You drag it up, hit another point. You just get it to where you want it. That's the useful thing about the line creation tool is it's very versatile. Add another point. Use your keyboard arrows if you want. Just get it exactly where you want it. Make some adjustments, and then you can go back, hit N again, get out of the node editing, go back to your draw line tool, click on the point where you ended, and keep going. So obviously the more zoomed in you are, the shorter the line, like the shorter the line is, between nodes. You get more accuracy if you're zoomed in a little bit more. So you click on the original node, connect it up, hit your space bar, it gets you out of the tool, close it out. And you can go in, you see these lines aren't connected now. So this line is highlighted and this one's not. So you know they're not connected. So first thing you wanna do is zoom out of the document, select everything, go in to join open vectors. You see here you got closed zero, open three. And vectors after joining, closed one. So you join them. Now if you click on the line, You'll see it's all pink, so that means it's connected. So you would hit N now, and you can go in and just clean up by adding points and moving points. And you can just clean up that line. Just added a point there. Anywhere there's a curve, just add another point. And that cleans up your line. And there you go. That's probably the most useful tool in the toolbar for me, for what I do, is the create line to trace around objects. Now you can also trace around the wheel, you can trace around uh, other areas if you're doing 3D in Aspire. This would be a way to create your 3D elements if you want this logo to be extruded, you would 
create your line around it and then extrude it out. Or if you want it indented, you could create your line around here and you would indent that. So you're giving your 3D shapes. So this is the end of part two of Vectric Tool Menus. Tune in next time where we will continue on with the Create Vector Tools. We'll focus in on the creating the text tools and how to manipulate them. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as we'll have new videos every week. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.